Now, providing it doesn't rain anymore and this river continues to drop at the rate it's been dropping, tonight will be absolutely perfect for all species, not just the barbel. But these fish are going to be hungry. There is some thunderstorms that are forecast. So that's this afternoon. Now, providing it doesn't rain too heavily, it should just stop the river from dropping off any further and just level out, probably about what it is now, which is perfect. Look at Pendle Hill in the distance, isn't that gorgeous? This is why we come down to this river. It is absolutely beautiful. Right in the heart of Lancashire. I'm just gonna talk you through the setup that I'm using today to tackle the slack water on a flooded river. So first of all, I'll start with the feeder. What size of feeder will I be using? Well, today I'm gonna to be using big five ounce feeders. Look at that, big tunnel feeders. Now, because I'm targeting barbel in the slack water, I'll be able to pack that full of little pellets and ground bait. And that should stay very, very still, just on the edge of the fast water, but still in the slack area. So that's gonna sit perfectly. There's no chance that's gonna be dragged away by the current because I'm not gonna be fishing directly in the fast water. What I'm gonna be putting in to this feeder, I've got a jar of all different sizes, all different flavors. Perfect for the barbel, perfect for the chub. And that's gonna be in the feeder. Different breakdown times as well. And also with the, when you're fishing rivers, if you use different sized pellets, it's very good because the heavier, larger pellets stay close to where you're fishing and the smaller pellets get carried off a little bit further downstream and what this does is it draws barbel up into your area. So that's why I fish with all different manner of size and also with flavours as well. It just gets the barbel not focused on one particular bait. It means that they're going to be drawn to a mixture of red, a bit like a pick and mix really. And that's what they're after. Perfect. Now that's all going to go inside that big five ounce feeder. What hook length, what length of hook length will I be using? Now because it's a flooded river, I'm going to use a long hook length. I'm going to be fishing right under my feet almost, probably about a, a rod length and a half out. So that line from the end of the rod is going to go, be going straight down to that feeder. So with that line elevated like that in the water, you don't want any line bites. So what you want is your feeder's here. This is your line coming down to the feeder. What you want is a big long hook length so that the fish will pick up all little bits of feed that are coming out of the feeder and they'll not be hitting off your line, spooking the fish and also giving you false bite indications. So what you want is at least a three foot, I've got three and a half, I think one of mine's four foot long today and it's, that's going to be right down away from the feeder. So what ground bait have I chose to plug the feeder with? Because it's flooded I'm using sticky ground bait to plug the feeder, that'll get the feeder down without any of the bait coming out and that'll just give it a slow breakdown time just give it enough time to settle on the bottom and a bit of a slower breakdown and then you'll start to get the the feed trickling out and that's perfect I'm also going to be using paste as well and but the paste is actually going to be wrapped around the hook bait so what hook bait will I use today well, because I'm using pellets in the feeder I'm going to use a pellet on the hook now the size of pellet I've chose I seem to be doing really well in flooded water using smaller pellets. They always say use a large smelly bait, which I do agree with. Meat is fantastic in these conditions and I have actually made a video in this swim when it has been flooded and I've done very well with the meat. I like to mix it up a bit and try different methods. It just keeps it interesting for me. So today I'm going to be fishing. This is my three and a half foot long hook length. That's coated braid and I've just stripped the last bit of the braid. You can just see I've just stripped the coating off and that's just going to be sitting nice and subtle on the bottom. Limp like so. So fish is going to pick that up and get hooked as it moves off. Perfect. I'm using it because I'm using a size 8mm pellet. I'm only using a size 10. The only thing I've got to say about using hooks is make sure you use a hook because you're tying the knotless knot and you're going through with coated braid. You need a hook that has a large eye. So that's why I use the animal. The Camison animal is the perfect hook 
if you want to use coated braid because it's got a large eye you can easily get the end of the braid through that knot twice it's very very easy so what have I got around the pellet I've wrapped a little bit of paste I'm going to be using two different types of pellet today two different flavors one's the lamprey and heron flavor that's so absolutely smells they smell gorgeous so I'm going to be using these on the hook look at all the size of them a little size 8 mil perfect I'm going to be using one on the hook I'm just going to wrap it with paste and there's the paste but what I like to do is use two different baits two different pastes so I'm going to be using the lamprey and the heron pellet on one rod and on the other rod I'm going to be using the furter flavour nice smoky meaty flavour the barb will just love it so I'm going to be using that on the other one and the same again I'm going to wrap that with the matching paste so this is exactly what it'll look like before I cast it out absolutely filled full of little pellets plugged with ground bait at both ends it's free running this feeder on the line it's free running comes down to a little core and quick change bead three and a half foot long hook length size 8 mil pellet wrapped in paste and done that with both rods the only other thing that I've done as well is I've put a little float stop behind the running feeder and that's about another four foot behind the running feeder and that's to protect the bait and the feeder from any debris that will be coming down the river because it's been so shallow it is summer and all of a sudden we've had some flash floods it's carrying some silkweed down and that'll catch any any debris so that's it so I've done enough talking now I'm just about set up I'm gonna get these rods cast in there I'm gonna have some fun hopefully I'll catch a barbel I'd be happy with a chub let's see what happens <laughs> done perfectly just a gentle lull bout only a rod length out and that's perfectly in the slack water exactly where I wanted it happy days that's both rods in now just a waiting game time now it's 14.03 middle of the day roasting hot now it's a bright sunny day usually it'd be very difficult to catch barbel or chub or any other species really most species of fish are too scared to come out in light conditions however when the river's chocolate brown like it is today you can get down you can fish all day long and you can still catch fish if you think of it this way fish come out to feed at night because they feel safe but when that water is brown after a flood it's just like night time to the fish down there they feel safe they're coming out and they're feeding so that's an opportunity for the angler get yourself out there in the daylight hours and you won't be disappointed just done with my downstream rod just had a little shudder Sometimes that's the barbel and what they're doing is they're, they're feeding in the area and they're just going over your line with their whiskers as they're feeling about on the bottom for the pellets. Sometimes you get a couple of little plucks and that's exactly what I just seen on that downstream rod. A couple of little plucks. Just keep an eye on it. Rods haven't been in long. Five minutes. Perfect conditions today. Lovely flood water. Brown, chocolate covered and a fish in a lovely slack. It doesn't get much better than this for summertime barbel fishing. Well, what you're witnessing now, no rods in the water. The downstream rod ripped right off and then I was in the fish. Boy, am I in the fish. It took me all the way downstream. I had to chase it. It was getting tangled up with some Himalayan balsam which is on the inside bank so I had to try and reel the other rod in the upstream rod reel that in threw it down in the margin and then I pursued this barbel as it took me the whole way downstream probably about 50 yards 60 yards through 
beds and beds of balsam and eventually I managed to bully it out of the, the weed and then play it upstream. So I've played it upstream now, it's resting in the net. The barbell needs a rest and I need a rest. Whoa, what a fight. So it lets me calm down now. I'll just let you know what happened there. So I was watching both rods right behind the camera. The camera went on lock. A bite started to materialize on the downstream rod and it was a cracker. It just bounced once. Classic three foot twitch then. Bzz, flew off right downstream. So I tried to get the camera open in time but I was unsuccessful. So you didn't get to see the bite. However, what a battle that was. Unbelievable. You wouldn't have seen much of the fight anyway because that fish pulled me right downstream. I had to follow it because it actually come in close and got tangled around some Himalayan balsam on the inside bank. So you wouldn't have seen much of the fight anyway because that was most of the battle was fought further downstream. I took a risk and I, and I left the rod in the rest while I reeled in the upstream rod, set that down in the margin and then continued the battle. The fish was still fine. And that was, what a fight, what a fight. So anyway, it must have took me about 10 minutes of a battle to eventually get it upstream and bring it to the net. So I've had a rest, the barbell's still resting right now. I've got my breath back. I must have went through a load of nettles. My arms got stung, but the adrenaline's still going on me. So I don't even feel the pain at all. But wow, absolutely gorgeous, absolutely stunning fish as well. So I've not even taken the hook out of its mouth yet. I've just left it in the net resting. Because it was a prolonged fight, especially in summer, I'm going to give it a good rest before I even bring it up under the bank. It's not even been out of the water. It's going to stay down there until I think it's sufficiently recovered before I bring it up. Quickly show you the fish, take a wee photograph, straight back into the ribble. Here's a quick look at the lovely fish just before I put it back. Isn't she beautiful? Absolutely stunning River Ribble Barbel. Thank you for making my day. Right, time to get this one straight back in. Happy day. Thunder, so we're due a bit of rain here as the weather app did get it right. They said it was going to rain. They said around about four o'clock, it's only half past three. That barbell took an hour, took an hour for that barbell. I knew it'd be quick, I knew as soon as I get them rods out, I knew the fish were here. So it just goes to show you don't need big baits when it's flooded if you're fishing in the slack areas and you're using small pellet in the feeder. The fish get used to eating, picking up all the wee small pellets and they've no problem finding your pellet, especially if you wrap it in paste. I just wanted to show you that you don't have to use big smelly baits, you can use small smelly baits. The key thing is something smelly and that's why I've used paste. That fish fell to the furter, so it's like the spicy sausage flavour. And here comes some gorgeous rain. Well needed rain, oh I need this rain. I'm not even gonna put my coat on, I'm just gonna lap it up. Just a wee rumble of thunder, no lightning. That's close by anyway. But I'm not gonna be sitting right next to the rods anyway. Let's hope it doesn't get struck. Oh, it's beautiful. What a lovely day on the ribble. Well, I chickened out, the rain has got really heavy, so I put my coat on. Oh, this is beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Just what the doctor ordered, a little bit of coolness.
beautiful. I've arranged to meet with a friend who has never caught a barbell or a decent sized chub so I'm going to go down onto the free stretch and we're going to see if we can catch ourselves a barbell or a chub. The River Ribble is a brilliant river, absolutely fantastic. I know a few wee spots on the free stretch that are very good for fishing in high water. There's plenty of areas along the free stretch that have big slack areas that are good fish holding spots so we're going to go down onto the free stretch and we're going to find somewhere with a big slack and we're going to see if we can fish probably in the darkness, see if we can get him a nice barbel or a chub. Up above the streets and houses, Bongo flying high, opens up his hurry legs to the plop in Jeffrey's eye. Deedle -deedle -deedle. Just arrived down at the free stretch, River Ribble, down with my friend and he wants to catch a barbel or a pike. We're going to get one aren't we? We definitely are. We're fe it's feeling really good. We actually didn't think we'd get down. We thought we'd get down here to be someone on this peg and there wasn't anybody on the peg. So that's a sign isn't it? We're going to get one. Definitely a good sign. And just see that sun going down there behind Horrocks's mill. As soon as that sun goes down, it's barbel time. Happy days. Is it a barbel? Yeah, definitely a barbel. Is it, is it giving you a good fight, eh? Yeah. Oh, happy days. This is definitely a barbel. You're christening my Do you know that rail? I, I don't think I've caught a barbel with that rail. Oh, I have. I've had one. <laughs> well done, mate. <laughs> it could be a carp. This is what you come down to the river for. Oh. <laughs> look at the bend. So now, 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 don't forget that's two and three quarter test curve, right? So uh, look at the bend. You still get a, you still get a nice bend it's in it. So light for two and three quarter. Oh, you're doing everything perfect there. Really the pumping it. for a massive run oh, under the rod yeah. tip. That's a good barbel this. Well I'll tell you how, how, how strong they are. It's fat like nothing I've ever fat fought before off. You don't need much fishing gear to have a beautiful time. I have the drag set just perfect for that. It's not too loose, not too tight. I had it set for a big fish. 
so I'd rather not have it give it too much line when it's flooded like this. They're a bit like carp, so once you get the head up, you can start dragging it back. They're like carp, aren't they? That's a tail. That's a barbel because they get their head down, don't they? They don't give up, you know? No, no. <laughs> This is what we came for. <laughs> that's a barbel, that's a barbel, I've just seen it. Didn't I tell you that rock would go first? <gasps> Don't forget that's a two and three quarter test curve rod, it's still fighting like a flipping devil, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Is that, is that light annoying you? No. Mission accomplished. Come on, my son. I love it when you can see the feeder and you sit right. It's starting to be tired now. I see the way it's coming up. Look at that. That's about a seven pound barbel. I'm telling you. If you need to walk back, see, it doesn't want to give up. Even, do you know what? I find that the seven, see the fish around about the seven pound mark, they fight harder than the double figure fish. I've got my scales on me. Oh, yes. Your first barbel, mate, and you've got it on film. I can't believe it. The first barbel on film as well. Oh, look at that. It got, a, it got, a, look, it's got its head full of oxygen then. You can walk back, if you need to walk backwards, walk backwards. Sorry, I don't have a big on the net, that's it. Walk backwards, walk backwards, walk backwards. In the net, in the net, my friend. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Right. Power in Well, we came down to the River Ribble today with one aim, and that was to catch ourselves a nice River Ribble barbel. So this is Scotty with his first ever Ribble Barbel. Can you believe it? He's actually got it on film and it's his first one. Absolutely gorgeous and what a fight. That was a good fight, wasn't it, Scott? Stunning. Absolutely I've cracker. Never a fight like that before. Oh, uh, do you know what? This is the first of many. Are you going to give it a wee kiss? There you go. I didn't even need to ask. He loves it. That's fantastic. Let's get that beautiful specimen back into the River Ribble where it belongs. Isn't it beautiful? What a lovely fish. 912, what a lovely fish. Absolutely good. That's bigger than my one earlier. Do you know the one I had earlier was only 9.8? 9.12. 9.12. Oh my lord. Sorry about saying that was a bit smaller. <laughs> that's absolutely fantastic. First barbel, 9.12. Now that's going to take some beating, you know. My biggest is 13.8. I've only had a handful of fish in the ribble over the magical 10 pound. I've probably had about 15 fish over the 10 pound in my life. Fantastic, mate. Oh. Well, I'm just on my way down here to the River Ribble, just walking through the woods, and it's very quiet. So I thought I'd talk you through my, my rig here, because when I get down to the river, it's going to be very noisy, right next to the motorway and plenty of traffic. And I've left it quite late tonight because it's been a very bright sunny day today and not really much hope of any bites. So I've waited till tea time when well, it's starting to dim off now and cool down a little bit. So the fish should be coming on the feed. So although people will be all coming home from work and there will be a bit of noise from the road, it's definitely still worthwhile coming down at this time because this is where this is when the magic happens. So I'm going to talk you through the rig I'm going to be using and the tactics I'm going to be using today. We're just starting off with the rod. I'm using an 11 foot rod today because I'm going to be holding this rod in my hand. It's actually a float rod. It's actually a pellet waggler rod but it's very light. Very light indeed. So that's 11 foot and usually designed for floats on still waters but it works brilliant on the river ribble when you're holding it in your hand and for Feeling for those bites when you're touch ledgering, our very light rod is absolutely vital. So, and here we've got a little, it's actually a little drop shot reel that I've paired with this and it's got some braid on there. 
and that's going to be perfect because I'm going to be holding the line and holding the rod and I'm going to feel any little touches I'm going to get from fish and then I'll know when to strike so for sensitivity reasons that's why I'm using braid so braid coming down the rod coming off the rod tip there at the very end and then I've got a very very long hook length on I've actually got it's about six foot long it starts here six foot of four pound nine and then just behind that I've got a little link swivel and then I've just tied the braid on that link swivel but I've also added a boom a little plastic boom there's a little clip there I can clip on weights very light today so just clip little weights on like I said I'm going to be touch legend standing in the river so that's going to be perfect and that comes down to a wee hook here actually not so wee it's a size 8 it's a size 8 I've just got it hooked on here as you can see it's very sharp it is barbed and you can just see the eyes just offset ever so slightly and the reason I'm using such a large hook is I'm going to be using meat now if it, was, if it was targeting barbel primarily I'd use a larger hook but today I'm just going to have a bit of fun and just see what I can catch. I'm going to be using meat but little small cubes and then I have got the opportunity to change this over to a larger hook and big chunks later on just as it's getting dark maybe get myself a nice big chub or a barbel but we're going to see what we'll catch today just on very light tactics as it gets darker I could move on to the heavier hook length and the heavier hook and the larger hook and the larger bait but I just want to have a little bit of fun so that's me all set perfectly ready to go I've just arrived down at the river and it's looking absolutely gorgeous it's almost gin clear now, I've had a lot of floods this week so it's just got down to normal levels now and I'm hoping that the fish are feeling hungry. So what are we going to feed the fish with today? Let's have a wee look. So this is what we're going to be using on the hook. It's bacon grill and look, all different sizes. There's some bigger ones, there's some smaller ones in there. Maybe a bit later on I might try a bigger piece. I'm going to be looking for catching the bigger fish, the bigger specimen size fish, but just as the light's still here, I'm going to be using little small cubes, probably about that size. Perfect for that little size 8 hook. And all fish love these. All fish love the bacon grill, it's absolutely beautiful. And I've also got a bag of mixed pellet and sweet corn here. So some of the swims I'll be fishing, because I'll be wading right out over gravel. I'm going to be piling in a few handfuls of this. I sprayed it with Scopex squid as well. It's definitely a flavour that worked for me at the end of the season last year. It's been a long time since I've actually touched ledger with meat and it's one of my favourite tactics for catching all fish. It's actually a tactic that works well if you're using a big lobworm as well and you can catch any species at all. Travelling very light today, just one backpack. No rod quiver, just I walk down with the rod already made up so no need to carry any bank sticks I'm going to be standing in the river I've got a little mat this is all the size of the weight I'm going to be using a little 10 gram little drop shot weight only a little 10 grammer but that is absolutely perfect just for bouncing a bit of meat down in the current and I threw a few wee pellets out there just to see what they look like on the floor and wee fish have already moved in and they're feeding on them and I've only just got out of the river that's a very good sign that's brilliant that gets me all excited can't wait to get in here I'm going to clip this on put a wee chunk of meat on that hook and get out there let's get this rod in and see what we can catch
well, what an absolute stunning fish and what a lovely fight that gave me. That was such a joy to play that fish. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, this fish is absolutely beautiful. Let's have a good look at her. I couldn't be more delighted. Caught right in the corner of the mouth. And I bet you that fish has never ever seen the bank before. An absolutely stunning chub. This is the catch of the season for me. I really enjoyed that. The most enjoyable fish I've caught this year. And you are beautiful. Just look at that. Absolute stunner of a fish. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, you can't beat this. You really cannot beat this. This is just the best feeling on earth. That's great. Time to get you straight back into the lovely river, Rebel, where you belong. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Well, as you can see, it's got dark. Time now. It's just gone 20 to nine. So I was only out there another, probably another half an hour and I've caught another little chub. Now this one is an absolute beauty. Look at, the, look at the size of that. Just a little chub. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm absolutely delighted with this fish. <laughs> Doesn't matter what size they are, I'm just happy to catch a fish. And to be catching it in one of my favorite methods, that was just the icing on the cake for me. I just love standing out there in the river holding the rod and just feeling for that nudge. And then the strike and then the, the wonderful battle that you get when you're, when you're fishing with really light tackle and using braid as your main line. Oh, you get such a great fight. Light rod, light tackle, and beautiful fish, no matter what size they are. Absolutely gorgeous. Aren't you? Just a beautiful little fish probably hasn't even seen the bank in its life. First time it's ever been caught. Beautiful. Let's get the wee hook out. Side of the mouth. There you have it. Absolutely beautiful. Let's get her back in the river. It's time for home. 
That's what I enjoy about living right next to the River Ribble. You can just come down for a quick little visit like that and have a couple of fish out in no time and then go back home for tea and medals. It's brilliant. I just love it down here on the River Ribble. I hope you find them tactics very useful and I hope that you use them yourself. What a very easy way to catch fish. Very simple. Why not try it yourself? Happy days. So here's my cozy home for the night. All it is is a tarpaulin sheet. I've got sleeping mat there. Gore-Tex sleeping bag liner. Nice crash ship sleeping bag. Two rod rests holding it up. One at that side, one at that side. I've got this rod fishing straight out. And my second rod, fishing out to the right. Great to be down on the bank again. I've really missed this place. This is an uh, alternative that you can, you can set up. If you don't like carrying a bivvy, if you're a bit of a mobile angler and you like to walk to your peg, um, and you don't want to carry much, this is an ideal setup. And there we are, we're waterproof, we're warm. I'm here to see if I can catch a lovely barbel. Here's another piker biker tip for you. So you don't want to be getting into your sleeping bag with your boots on. So why not try these? These are neoprene socks. This is what divers use. Uh, they're complete, completely waterproof and you're not gonna get your feet wet. You fit right over your socks and you can tuck your trousers down into them as well. So that's absolutely perfect. I can get into my sleeping bag now. Should I get a take in the middle of the night? I know I could just jump up, run out, start playing the fish without having to look for my boots because I know my feet are going to be bone dry. Perfect. I've had a couple of wee touches on this right hand rod. Nothing on the left yet. Well, I'm very happy to be down in the River Ribble for the first time this season and even more happier to catch this lovely fish. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to slip her back to the River Ribble now. Definitely worth coming down tonight for this gorgeous fish. some almighty snags in there. So that concludes the session there. I've had three runs today. One fish landed, and I don't think I'll be coming back down here in a hurry to fish this peg, because there's a big tree that's been washed down with the floods. So I'm gonna pack this gear up, quit while I'm ahead. Lovely, lovely big beast of a barbel caught in my first session in the River Ribble. I'm happy with that, so that just makes me hungry for the next time when I come down again. So until that time, tight lines everybody, enjoy your own fishing. Thank you very much for watching. 
God bless and happy days.